Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of The Dead, the show where I go on and on about the things that are on my mind. I'm your host, the Chris the Tigress, and let's get right into it, shall we? This is a semi-response video to something that Joe Boy posted um, yesterday or last night. I remember watching it last night, so I'm going to say it was last night. And that video, the video we posted was titled How to Be Effective Sexual. I agree with all of the advice he's given. Keep a foot in reality, imagine your FOs, have conversations with your FOs in your head, and have a piece of them nearby in case you need comfort. And, and also, there was one more, come on brain, what was it? <laughs> oh yeah, keep pictures. Or keep keep a picture or keep pictures in my in my in my case I keep pictures plural of Arden uh, on my computer and my phone and my PlayStation so yay I have my bases covered but anyway um let me start with the first point keeping a foot in reality that is that is a key point. That is a key point. That That is a key point that we all should remember. RFOs, even though it hurts to admit it, don't exist in our world. There could be an entire other world where they do exist, but that's multiverse theory, and we're not going to get into that. <laughs> because that would defeat the purpose of this video, wouldn't it? So, <clears throat> yeah, but anyway, RFOs, no matter how much it hurts to admit it, are not real. They don't exist in our world at all. Even though we wish with all our heart that they did, they don't. Um, again, that is important to remember. Second point, imagining your FO. Now, this one is, now this one can either be uh, difficult or easy depending on the situation. If it's, say, a high-stress situation, it might be harder to imagine them. Um, personally, for me, it's harder to it's harder for me to imagine Arden in certain high-stress situations. But if it's something like mild anxiety or just me being nervous over something, then it's a little then then it's then it's easy. It's fairly easy. <clears throat> also, it helps. I'm I'm gonna add this piece of advice. It also helps if you're in a quiet place. If you're a quiet place, if you're in a quiet place, you can focus on them and not what's going on around you. Which is why I tend to, which is why I tend to imagine Arden whenever I'm alone in my room. I just imagine him whenever I feel lonely, whenever I feel upset, whenever or whenever my anxiety just will not leave me the hell alone. And that that definitely helps. Another thing. Another thing. Um, another thing that also helps um, me is... Okay, I, I should probably provide an example. Uh, back when I had to get my blood drawn, maybe two, three weeks ago, Probably more at this point. I don't know. It feels like three weeks ago, so we'll go with that. Um, I, I, yeah, I was getting nervous. I usually do get nervous when needles are involved because of, you know, past experiences. So I'm just like, well, crap. I have to get my blood drawn. Shit. <laughs> so, um, whenever... Whenever I, whenever they called my name to go back there, I imagined Arden going with me. I imagined him going back, going to the back with me. And he was there, and he was comforting me. He was speaking in a very soothing tone, and that, that really helped. That helped me to calm down. Because, again, needles do things to me. Needles make me nervous. 
granted, it wasn't as bad as, as it used to be. Back when I was a kid, I would cry and scream. But nowadays, I'm mostly calm and quiet. Well, not, well, not calm, but <laughs> definitely not calm. But, but, um, quiet. So, basically, I was suffering in, in silence whenever I go have to get blood drawn or get a flu shot or whatever. Um, but yeah, <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> the other point, the other point he made, or another point he made, was um having something that represents your fo or something that your fo has on their person like having a piece of them with you and i got to say that is very sound advice and when you and when you and when you when you like made suggestions and when you said scarf just by the by joe i <laughs> I instantly thought of Arden because, yeah, he wears a scarf. He wears a scarf. Like, I, 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 I would, I would honestly, freaking, I, if I, if I had the money, I would get something of Arden's. Um, not so much the scarf as it would be his coat. Something about just that big, warm coat, just wrapped around my person, as like a comfort item or or a security blanket that that i i <laughs> that would make my life that would definitely make my life if i had the money to do that boy howdy would i um also i kind of skipped a point accidentally uh and that was making a conversation with your fo having a conversation in your head with your fo and <laughs> I've talked to Arden about myriad things. I've talked to him about dreams I've had. I've talked to him about life stuff. And recently I've started to talk to him about uh, an unreleased N64 game called Dinosaur Planet, which at this point, at this point, that game has become an unhealthy obsession for me. I, I, it, it's become an, an unhealthy obsession. But he, 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 he's, he's, um... He, he's he's used to me talking about it at this point. I mean, God, you should have seen me when um when more track more music tracks started to surface. Um, there was a user sidebar by the way. There was there was a user named uh Gen I think it was Gensho Ishida or no Genso Ishida Ishida um who posted level geometry of the original ice mountain racetrack and a, a a a a ton of tracks tons of new tracks some of them weren't even labeled some of them weren't even labeled <clears throat> some of them <clears throat> like and i and i listened i listened to these um I listened to um, all the track, all the un unlabeled tracks, to see if I could pin where they would go, because I'm weird like that. <laughs> um, and a lot of the music in that game is actually really good. I'm surprised they didn't use it in Star Fox Adventures because that's what that game evolved into. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've I've spoken to Arden about that myriad times, and when the tracks came out. Like, like, when that user posted those unlabeled music tracks, and some of them were labeled, but mo but a good chunk of them were not labeled, I lost my mind, and good lord. <laughs> now, <clears throat> a lot of people think, oh, well, since he's a villain, he's probably going to be annoyed by that. But no, he's honestly not. If anything, he thinks it's cute. Like... Let's be honest. If anything, he thinks it's cute. Because every time I start gushing about it, every time I start talking about it, like, I can just see a smile. Like, it's... Wow. Um, <laughs> oh, 
off topic much. Um, anyway, sidebar over, back to the main topic. Um, let's see, what did we... Oh, yeah, uh, pictures. I have... I'm gonna be honest. I don't have just one picture of Arden. I have... I think last I counted, I had just a little over 100. I have 54 or 55 of them on my copy of 15. <clears throat> Plus, I think 20 to 30 on my, uh, in my capture gallery. Excuse me. And I have, <clears throat> I have, I think 65 on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, just being able to look at him is, um, <clears throat> being able to look at him is by far the most amazing thing. Especially when he has a soft expression or an inquisitive expression because that those two expressions alone are friggin' adorable to me. <laughs> because one, usually every time he has a soft expression, I might be having a good look on this, but every time he has a soft expression, he's looking right at the camera, aka he's looking at me. And that is spectacular. Just, mm, yes. But anyway, um, the last thing I'm going to go over is the very last thing Joe went over, ironically, and that is the, um, the NSFW perspective on things. Um, and again, I agree with what he had to say. There is no way on earth you're able to... There's, there's no way on earth you're able to have sex with um, a fictional character at all. Because, again, they don't exist on this um, plane of existence. It's, it's physically impossible. So, anyway. Um, but I do have to admit... Yes, I have looked at Arden in a sexual light. I have. I mean, hate to brag. I honestly hate to brag. But I mean, my god, just 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 look at him. <laughs> just look at him. He is like he, <laughs> he is like an ancient Roman statue. I mean, holy shit. But anyway, <laughs> Back on topic, yeah, I, I I do view him in a sexual light sometimes because I mean, when 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 you really can't get any sort of like sexual release because of a physical disability, you kind of have to fantasize, and like, granted, I've done that with a lot of other characters over the years, but so something something about Arden just set set sets me off in like the best way, but. <laughs> Anyway, back on topic, me. Come on, back on topic. Um. Anyway, yeah, it's it, it's not it's not an inherently bad thing to view your FOs in a sexual light. It's not it's not a bad thing to think of them while you you know pleasure yourself. It, it's completely natural. Don't be ashamed of it. It's completely natural. And I'm probably going to get this video flagged or something just by even saying this stuff. But uh, as long as this, you know, gets out there, it's I, I, I'm fine with it. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay to view your characters in, or your FOs in that light. It's completely fine. It's completely natural. No worries. It's like, it's like the same thing with real people. You look at somebody and go, oh, wow, I'm going to think about that tonight. And, yeah, that's, that's par for the course. 
Like, that's honestly par for the course. Hell, God, I did that when I tried to have a swing at Gladio. Like, damn, son. But, anyway. <laughs> God, I keep meandering. Why do I keep meandering? Um... <laughs> But anyway, yeah, like you, you, you have your FOs. You do what you want with your FOs, whether that be doing the do in your brain or having conversations or anything of the sort. Because at the end of the day, you connect. You connect with your FO the way that that you feel is right. You connect with them in, in a way that feels natural to you. And if that involve, if that involves sex, then fine. Because again, I do that. I will not, I am not ashamed to admit that. Because at the end of the day, it, 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 as I've said at least, <laughs> at least ten times during this section, it's natural. Um... God, I'm trying to find what else to say because I wanna, I wanna supplement his video like with more tips, but at the same time, it feels like I'd be treading the same ground. Oh God. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, here's a thought. Um. Don't, don't be afraid to love whomever you want. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, of course, the primary examples that come to mind are Joe and his FO. I think his, I think it was Sunburst. Yeah, Sunburst. Pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, Joe. <laughs> um, and then another example would be Arden. Because Arden is what a lot of people consider to be evil or a villain. And I, I, I distinctly remember writing something on Tumblr. I read through it aloud in the first take of this video, but I decided not to because eh, some of the stuff I said in there kind of didn't sound proper coming out of my mouth. So... <laughs> Basically, I mean, I could summarize what I wrote, basically. Um, basically, to love a villain, or to love somebody who is considered morally gray, is to understand their motivations. For Arden, his is based in trauma. He... He was groomed to be the founding king of Lucis. He was going to be king, and he was groomed as such by Bahamut, who resides in the Sacred Crystal. And not only that, but Arden was also given the task of healing his people of the Star Scourge. I'm pretty sure I went over this in a previous video. If not, if, if, and if I did, sorry, if I did, then you know the story, but if not, well, I'll keep going. Um, so as Arden healed the people, he took the scourge into himself because that was the only place that it could go. So Arden was quote unquote corrupted by the scourge. Bahamut essentially said, nah, man, you're not going to be king anymore. Hey, Somnus, come get your crown, my boy. And Arden was pretty much cast into ignominy, and he was tortured. He was imprisoned. Well, imprisoned and tortured, but order is very um, superficial right now. <laughs> um, so anyway, Arden was imprisoned wrongfully imprisoned and tortured and eventually supposedly executed or in in the case of episode ignis arden says that he was cast into exile but i don't think 
like okay back in like ye old times i don't think they would um cast anyone into exile they probably would have executed them for crimes against um their deity of choice so what I think happened was Arden um, Arden was imprisoned, tortured, executed, and when he didn't die, when he did not die, they uh, exiled him. Whether that be on the island of Angel Guard or in Pityos Ruins or one of the other dungeons is up for debate. Um, either way, Arden spent 2,000 years in in darkness 2000 years alone now correct me if i'm wrong but if if you were cast out like that if you had been deemed a monster in the eyes of your people and tortured and killed and then exiled after you didn't die and imprisoned again <laughs> You would you you wouldn't feel the same way. You would probably slay an oracle or two just to just to get at the at the new chosen king. Like, don't tell me you wouldn't fucking do that because human nature, knowing human nature, you probably would. But anyway, um, <laughs> God, I went off on such a tangent. But anyway, yeah, if if you fail to understand their motivations, then you fail to understand them as a person. And a lot of the rhetoric of everything being simply black and white, good and evil, isn't a good thing. Because when there's somebody who is morally gray, like Arden, or say somebody else, may, maybe maybe uh, Deadpool for a for a Marvel reference there. Um, people tend to turn their nose up at them, like no, they're they've done bad things. Ergo, they are always bad. They are on the dark side. But that's that's not true. That is most definitely not true. What is true is that they're human. And like all humans, they make mistakes. They've done things they've regretted, said things they've regretted. I'm pretty sure Arden has a lot of regrets. I'm pretty sure a lot, a, like Arden has a lot of things that he wishes he could do better. But that's the beauty of it. Humans aren't perfect. Arden is not perfect. And that is the key to good writing, is when you give your character flaws. To give your character trauma to give your character something to work for. For Arden, it was his own death. And yes, in canon, he's dead. And that sucks a whole lot. But, um... <clears throat> but yeah, anyway. Um... A lot of morally gray characters are imperfect. They're not perfect at all. Hell, even good villains, even good heroes, sorry, even good heroes are flawed. A good character in general is flawed. And a lot of people will look at those flaws and mistakes. Like I said earlier, they'll look at these flaws and mistakes and say, oh, they're horrible people. Or Arden's a horrible person because he killed Luna Freya. Spoiler alert. <laughs> or Arden is a bad person because he was corrupted by the Scourge. Which, for all intents and purposes, he couldn't help that. 
that corruption happened without much notice, without much sign. But, God, I've gone on on such a fucking tangent. Back on topic! Um, basically, what I was trying to say is... Don't... Don't judge people for their FOs. Don't judge a person for their FO choice. Don't judge the FO. Because, I mean... Again, we're only human. None of us are perfect. And nothing's all black and white. There's always just a little bit of a gray area. And that's where a lot of good characters lie. That's where Arden lies. That's where, um, that's where the gods in 15 lie. That's where, hell, I'm pretty sure that's where a lot of, that's where a lot of popular FOs are, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, that's enough out of my mouth. Um, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful episode of The Den. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you're feeling generous. And as always, this has been a Crystal Tigress, and I will see you in the next round. Peace.